Welcome back to another episode of Making the Metaverse. This week, we're going to be going on a whistle-stop tour of where XR is. And um, obviously, the dynamic duo of James and Max, um, my expertise in blockchain, but Max's expertise are all around experience, virtual reality, augmented reality, and all the interesting things which build the experience layer of the Metaverse. So today, I'm going to be interviewing Max about some of the cool and interesting things you can do as a beginner in XR. So the first question I have, Max, is what is XR? Yeah, well, it, in the simplest terms, it's extended reality. So you're talking about virtual reality, augmented reality. Um, some would even um, classify things such as uh, immersive experiences like LED displays. Um, it's really, yeah, moving that experience, the, like I said, the experience layer into uh, yeah, virtual reality, augmented reality, and some would say immersive experiences too. So moving then, I think, to the first thing, which is the big picture here is in virtual reality. So could you explain what a virtual reality is and kind of break down the different hardware which you would need to get started with virtual reality? Yeah. I mean, if the origins of virtual reality have begun in gaming, you know, that's where virtual reality happened and through like desktops and the first games that were ever, were ever, were ever invented, you know, such as Pong and, and stuff yeah. like that, you know, when when the, you finally had the graphic interface into computers and you're able to have, have games, that's re I think really where the XR really began, began life was in, was in the games and as, um, as you know, things have progressed. You've you've seen massive worlds being built, like in Fortnite, in um, World of Warcraft, all these uh, massive online online games. So, the the idea of like extended reality has been seen in been seen been seen in gaming, and I think that um, when you understand virtual reality, all that it now is the extra hardware layer that now I can just put a a headset on. And when I put the headset on, I can just get immersed into these virtual worlds. And I can remember seeing virtual reality like as a kid, like so I'm, I'm 31, born in the 1990s. Uh, and I remember probably four or five seeing early editions of like virtual reality headsets. And um, so they've been knocking around for a while. So it's not necessarily anything new, but I think what's really changed the landscape is the technology has just moved moved along so much but it has been 15 20 years in in the making to get to a point where it's kind of ready for mass adoption and even now it's still got a, a long way to go so virtual reality really is just an extension i think of the games and having that hardware layer now you can jump into the get games and make it a really immersive immersive experience so what kind of uh, hardware i mean what's the what's the most what's the easiest way to to experience virtual reality at a moment. Yeah, probably the Oculus headsets, Oculus Quests, probably the easiest way. I mean, um, you know, Facebook and Meta, now now Meta and Mark Zuckerberg invested in Oculus, you know, um, five, 10 years ago, uh, quite, well, I don't know the exact date, but it's been it's been probably almost a decade in, in the making. Oculus probably market leaders, but you can experience it through other headsets like um, there's the HoloLens by Microsoft, there's Pico headsets who just got acquired by TikTok. So TikTok, watch, that, watch this space, they're gonna be doing something in, in the metaverse. Um, uh, who obviously uh, brought the Pico headsets, which are which are pretty decent. There's a variety of different headsets out there. HTC um, have have got an enterprise solution, ranging in price from a couple hundred pounds to a couple of thousand pounds. But to be honest with you, like virtual reality, yeah, is um, you know you could define it by headsets. But if you really want to talk about getting into the area of the metaverse and stuff, some people would argue that ju just by going on your desktop, you can enter enter virtual worlds, and you may not actually need the hardware to do that. I think it's important to understand the foundations of virtual reality and the, and the metaverse as a wider term are all mainly built on Unreal Engine or Unity. They're their software that power all these all these experiences. So if you want to understand how do you build these worlds, it's Unity, Unreal Engine. They're the two engines that power the ecosystems. Yeah, and we spoke about how you know these the the metaverse of the future will combine centralization with decentralization and yeah. that gaming is going to be centralized because of the, the amount of power you need to really create those immersive experiences. Yeah. So just touching on, I suppose, you know, the, the, moving on to a hardware piece. So 
you, you have the headsets and stuff and you have phones for inexperienced yeah. augmented reality. So um, what would you advise and what's kind of the software which you use? If, we, if, you're, a state, if you're a beginner, what kind of, um, what platforms or software or experiences would you recommend a beginner use to orient themselves with this new type of technology? Yeah, I mean, Unreal Engine, really yeah. good solution. You don't require any, you know, programming. You can yeah. use Unreal Engine out of the box. You can do a lot with it. Um, but obviously, if you want to get, you know, deeper into it, you do need to know um, basic coding to, yeah. to get into the depths of it. But, um, and I, I would imagine in the future, there's going to be more low code solutions out there. Like in the future, just as people can build a website through low code, most people are going to be able to build basic 3D interfaces yeah. out, out, the, out of the box. So I think that's the way it's going to go. And um, yeah, so Unreal Engine, a good entry level software to kind of use. But in terms of if you just want to, you know, try on VR, um, you, you put on your headset and, you know, you, you, you put in your Oculus headset. There's a ton of apps on your yeah. Oculus store which you could use. Yeah. Is there any which you think which you've bought a headset, you say, I'm going to try virtual reality, yeah. I'm going to try this stuff. Where would you recommend people, like, explore first? Yeah, I think, um, you know, obviously you've got the meta suite, like yeah. Horizon, Worlds, yeah. uh, Home. So you could, you could, obviously, if you buy Oculus, you're going to be prompted to go into the meta worlds first. Yeah. And Meta got some, I mean, they're investing like billions of dollars yep. into it and it is, it is getting better. I personally like just to kind of um, be completely transparent with you. I don't really want Meta to win the race for the metaverse just because I feel that they the way that they track people, the way that, and it's not their fault, it's like a, the the whole the way they monetize everything is through ads. Like people complain and say, oh, I don't want to be on Facebook, but at the same time, I don't want to pay for Facebook. Like I want it for free. Yeah. So you have to give up your data. Yeah. And in Facebook, once you agree to that, Facebook obviously are going to just keep taking your data and monetizing that pool. Yeah. Unless people say, look, well, do you want to pay for Facebook? Or which they will be like, no, I'm not no, going to pay. I'm not going to pay for it. And I don't want you to yeah. take my things. They just want yeah. everything, everything for free. So it's not that like Mark Zuckerberg or the team are evil. It's just like they're monetized by that. And if People are using free applications and, and like Meta Workrooms is free, like Meta Worlds is free, it's all free, but it's not free because they're going to be taking your data, iris movements, tracking your eyes, and eventually the headsets, um, the later editions do actually have, um, you can put stuff on the back of your head and it actually track your brainwaves. So if you want to move forward, you just think of moving forward, think of moving back. It can track your actual brain movements because you know, in these worlds, like, you know, you don't actually want to get up and run. You just want to think of moving yeah. forward and you will therefore move forward. And it's um, it's not necessarily like interacting with your brain, like sending signals. It's just capturing the images on the back of your, on the back of your head. So hopefully, like I personally probably, I'm not going to use any sort of that uh, brain tracking technology. I say that now, but as- you We'll know, get amusing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, but my point is, is like, when a company like that is incentivized so much that it's a bit dangerous. But I like Apple and I think because Apple monetize, they monetize the stuff through hardware, like buying smartphones and Apple are very much on their whole, they, their selling point is now um, uh, privacy and like yeah. not tracking and like, and it's fine they can do that through the the hardware. So when Apple released their their hardware and they've got their app store, I would, I Apple are gonna be uh, hopefully bring some cool stuff out. But I would recommend people look at a tool called Engage. Yep. Engage is a really Engage. great tool. Um, you can look at things like um, also Spatial is another great tool. I would, you know, uh, you can look at Meta, but personally, I am i don't want them to run out, <laughs> run out the way. <laughs> well, I agree with you there. Yeah. I think Spatial is great. You've got great, um, like the, the, the face recognition is, is quite good. Yeah. Each one has different advantages. Engage is great because you yeah. can view it 2D as well, can't yeah, you? So yeah, you can you view go it on your desktop. Desktop, yeah. which is another thing I think is yeah. important is having that, I suppose, that flexibility of your experiences to allow people who aren't interested in virtual reality to experience yeah. through their desktops as well. Yeah, exactly. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. There's lots of worlds being built right now, lots yeah. of experiences. And if you're a beginner to XR and you want to understand, you know, how do you run this, these for like marketing purposes and like for your business, you can do really cool events in these spaces. Like people are sick of webinars. They got webinar fatigue. 
you can do events in in there. You can create really cool immersive experiences, like take people through journeys and stories. Like the idea of immersive storytelling is really powerful to to then on augmented reality through the power of your phones and soon to be AR glasses, you can do some really exciting stuff. And I think the missing link for XR is the AR glasses. I think yeah. once you can put some glasses on and then now I could just beam you up into the room and be like, yeah. okay, you know, we're gonna have a conference call with the team at Social Tree. You put on the AR glasses and now everyone's sitting around the table. I can see everyone. Yeah. Maybe we have a kind of um, a desk there where we can pop up like work, workspaces maybe have like a project planning map for campaigns and we, we've got our glasses on and we can put sticky notes and plan and collaborate and we can see each other across you know as as holograms then you're really into the metaverse and xr and i think um who knows when the glasses will be out like obviously um uh, google glass came out with their you know they they thought about this a long time ago and never took off yep. we're still waiting for meta's release of their ar glasses and also snap, snap. snap yep. and then also apple to release yep. it they could be like you know they could be rubbish yeah. <laughs> honestly like you might put the glasses on and be like this is a bit of anti-climax and then you'll be, you're going to be waiting another five ten years maybe 10 20 years like but i think the human race will get there they will create glasses that are good enough um but you're just going to have to see how these glasses come out and what they look like, because Google tried it before. And um, if, they, if they don't get the glasses right, it could be a massive anti-climax, the whole thing. <laughs> people, yeah. people be like, it you could know be, what? Yeah. It's, people may uh, not want to have yeah. like, you know, what you're recording me and stuff. Yeah. That was a big problem Google asked for. People weren't aware of like the privacy thing. Yeah. But I think Apple, that's very exciting with Apple when they bring out their AR yeah. um, thing. So, so just to conclude then, so, so I suppose first, First step, then buy an Oculus headset, try out the the, the apps, yeah. see how you get on. But there's so much to unpack. Yeah, yeah. But I think you know. That's yeah, get so, yourself yeah. a VR headset. Um, when the when the AR glasses come out, whether it's Snap, Meta, yeah. um, or Apple, buy buy some glasses. You pay, play Pokemon Go on your phone um, yeah. if you want a kind of AR experience and um, watch Ready Player One. Yeah. Watch the Matrix if you want so a dystopian yeah. view of it. Because obviously we've got to make this work for humanity. We don't want it to be like, oh, people are trapped in these virtual yeah. worlds. You know, you want to, it's got to be a, whatever we do has to improve the human experience. So Absolutely. that's what people yeah. have to think about. And what a brilliant way to end, end this episode. So uh, yeah, thanks everyone for watching. If you want to continue to get updates, please like and subscribe to our channel. And we'll be back going into Metaverse next week.